Think the money, say the money, move the money.
Hello guys! How we doing? How we diddling? Yes, I am doing a video. Or a stream. I can never remember what I'm doing anymore. But <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. And I'm queer. Apparently. So they keep telling me. And as per you, the dogs are fighting. I mean, just look at them. Look, look at them. Yeah. That's right, Bliss. You get her. You get her, Bliss. You tell your daughter. Look at them. They're going for it. Destroyed my living. That teddy is dead. They've killed it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> that happened. Right. Is that okay? A bit more. Sorted. Right. We are having a chill out stream today. I hope. We're going to try anyway. So, let's hook over to this window. Splendid. Everything is working I believe I think so yep how really cut we get rid of that control f2 it's gonna annoy me being there totally um, um, let's, let's see if we can uh, come on computer Really? Really? That's better. Um, oh, it's just not going to let me. Control F2. No. That just does not. Oh well. Let's just play the game. Um, episode 1 Revenge. Um, what's going on? Um, two seconds. Um, um, have, have I broken it? Um, I think I have. Um, I think I have actually broken it. Um, uh, quit this a minute. Why? What? Why is on face? I haven't even done any face rig, and it goes to that. God damn you, you stupid computer. Absolutely stupid. Come on, any time today. Just come on, do something. There we go. Really? It's not available. It is available. God damn it. Right. We're going to have to do a restart. Stupid computer. Oh my god. What was that error? Um. Um. Hmm. And let's do arguing. Do, do. Right. Wow. What is going on? That screen. That is crazy. Um. Have, have I broken it? I have a feeling I have broken it. Um, maybe it's just X. X split are broken. I, it could be. Looking at it. 
Really? Um. Really? Old dogs. Sharp. Right. That's better. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. Look at them. How long will it be before they realize? Because that's what happens on my streams. The dogs do whatever they want. Um, well, I think this computer's broken. I hope not. I don't want to format it again. God damn you. Oh god. That's way up there. That's... Um... Down. Right. Come on. Any time to... Is, is that it? Uh, I think so. Uh, please. Um, sound. Have we got sound now? Have we? We do. Sort of. Um. Yep. Yeah. Really, dogs? I should really have checked this all out earlier. But it was working f for YouTube. Now it doesn't work. God damn you, stupid computer. I end up cable tie. I am going to cable tie you. Please work. God damn you. I just want you to work. Nothing much. Just work. <laughs> oh dear. Really? Come on. God damn you. I bet it's the overclock. But it doesn't like it. Do 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 do. Do 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 Yeah, good sound. That's better. I was worrying. Oh no. Alright. Settings. Let's just turn it down. Just a tiny bit. That's better. Right. We are ready to go. Um, continue. Texan, working, all at the same time. It's all gonna go wrong. Um, <gasps> my immediate. Welcome back to New York, Ray. Reaction. Ray Curtis update. from the two seven homicide. This is my case. Mine oh. too. Just turn them down a little bit. Maybe a bit higher than. And that. Uh, back. Play. Oh no. Now, 
Olivia Benson, SVU. SVU? Yeah, I got a call the victim showed signs of sexual assault. Your lieutenant said you guys were a little short-handed and my partner is on leave. So I'm here to assist. Yeah, department cutbacks. Everybody wants more cops, nobody wants to pay more taxes. And now we're down one more taxpayer. Who is she? Name tag says Rachel. Judging from the uniform, she was one of the housekeeping staff. Oh, All right. up until a few hours ago. I guess someone didn't like the mint on their pillow. <laughs> Charming. Right. Ray Curtis. Olivia Benson. Oh my god. That was so loud. Um, can, 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 can we not skip it? Really? We can't skip. God damn it. <sighs> Hola, soy Detectivo Ray Curtis. Soy Teresa Restrepo. Restrepo? Is that Colombian? Yes, how'd you know? The neighbors across the hall when I was growing up. They made the best patacones. I get hungry just remembering. I need to ask you a few questions. You okay to talk? Yes. Believe it or not, right, I'm going to turn the silent detection on. Hopefully, we shouldn't hear the dogs. Hopefully. Let's start with an easy one. Can you tell me the victim's name? Maybe. I. It's, it's hard to remember. So many girls working here. Everybody always coming and going. I just learned to read the name tags like everyone else. Well, could you try for me? Sure, you got my size. Sure. Uh, let's see. I'll um, read the name tag. It um, Rachel? It was, uh, ah, it was Rachel, I think. Um, yes. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I? So every question you answer correctly will earn you a star. The counter shows how many stars you have earned during this part of the investigation along with how many stars you need to earn to ace the interview. Alright. Number of stars you earn for an episode will determine your detective ranking. You can earn bonus stars by being a diligent investigator. Um... Yes. That's the one. Oh yeah, I'm great. Um, statement confirms name tag detective Henry. Yeah, well, that's already we know that. You need to make a transcripts. Okay then. Great. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Teresa. New topic. It's been All right. How long has she worked here? No say. Um, she Work was pretty it. new. Started last month, maybe? She have any trouble with anyone? Trouble? No, not her. She was nice, you know? Quiet, polite. Actually, no. Quiet. Never mind. What were you going to say? Well, she just never really seemed like one of us, you know? Like, like she had something else going on. A snob. Always watching everything. A and, prostitute. Oh, and tapping on her phone. Era una adicción. Okay. Um. Um. Let's do. See anyone suspicious hanging around lately? Suspicious. Yeah. The hotel is full of them. Lots of old businessmen always staring at you. Ugh. Okay. Perfect. How about anyone especially interested Perfect. in Rachel? That old. No, I, I don't think so. She didn't even have a boyfriend. I bet she did. Um, okay. The weather. So, crazy weather lately, huh? <laughs> yeah. The kids, they just want to spend all day at the pool. What's Pointless this got to do with the murder? Nothing. Pointless one. Just talking. Okay. We should get back to the victim. The phone. You say she liked to use her phone. For what? You think she was earning a little extra money? What, like John's? Are you asking? Did I? Right, Dean. How you doing? Detective? <laughs> I you need don't cheese think doodles, so. right, but, Hero? Uh, how you doing, who man? Knows? It would explain a lot. 
Anything else about the phone? She was always texting. Always. She also did always some did. weird stuff. She took pictures of the rooms and, and even some guests. For a while, I actually thought she might be a cop. Where would the phone be now? A Probably cop. nearby. She always kept it close. One last thing, Teresa. It would help us if we knew the last place Rachel might have been. Do you know which room she would have been cleaning? That's the weird thing. Today was her day off. A she day shouldn't off? even be here. Really? So what was she doing all dressed up for work? Sorry. Don't make mods. You figure it out, Guapo. No, they didn't hear her. I even questioned PayPal about it. Nothing. Nothing came up from her. At all. I mean, I even got email come through saying that... <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Dean. I've forgotten that I'd set the follow to that. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh. Really, dogs? Oi! Bed! Go on. Go on down. No! Bed! You too! Bed! Not playtime? No? Goddamn dogs. Right! Don't look at me like that. I'm gonna get socks. I am. I'm gonna sell a tape socks to your feet. Yeah. Don't you start. Bloody dog. Right. It's a good job. Steph's out for the night. She likes. She likes to respond to be hey Benson, people. What you got? I'm seeing a lot of across her throat. Not finger marks. More like a pipe or a cane. No sign of a murder weapon? Guess we better start looking. While you were busy being charming, I wrote down a couple of things to keep an eye out for. Her right. ID, her purse, ID, yep. her day got planner it. or notepad, and of course any DNA evidence from her attacker. Okay. Might be under her fingernails. Got it. And her cell phone. Teresa mentioned that cell might be phone. important. Got it. Right, so, so, looking for, right, okay then, right, cell phone, DNA, notebook, victims, ID, right, so, um, okay, fine, oh, yeah, wait, okay, fine, I can do that. Okay, there you go. A draw de circo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big trouble. Right, so we want that. That's her ID. Rachel Trevino, 27 years old, lives at 600 East 5th Street. Yep. Over Thank in you. East Village, if I remember right. Right, got the ID. Um, oh, DNA. Um, that fingernail. She scratched them up pretty bad, I bet. Some kind of debris under there. Better get a swab for DNA. Got that. Uh, what else? Um, we got a. Oh, her bag. This could be Rachel's purse. It's not coach, but not cheap either. Someone was taking care of her bills. And. One notepad. Notebook. Got Just it. A couple of notes. Right. Just need. What the hell is a... that? A cell phone. That's what we need. Remember the. Um. Nothing there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, baby. Got it. Okay, good. We got ourselves. I'm good at this. I'm good at this game. Oh yeah. Six guesses. 
She's got a couple awesome. of voice mails. Let me see. Absolute. Yep. Sounds like she awesome. was meeting somebody here. Okay, this is evidence. Let's get back to the precinct and give it to CSU. Why not just listen to him now? I better follow procedure on this one. Such a damn dogs. Hey, if we solve this case, I finally get my murder merit badge. Come on, I'll drive. Murder merit. Oh my god. Ray. Morning, Lenny. Please tell me we got a new lead on the Central Park case. Oh, sure. If you count uh, nothing, not a bupkis. It's been six weeks. The murder weapon is right. probably at What's the bottom of the Hudson. Going on here. I tell you what. Let's go I think we're stalled. Crazy. Out, kid. I hate loose ends, ends Lenny. Tell me about it. That at way, my age, I got to I'm not listening to myself anymore. Can. That does my Ray head in. Curtis, as I live when you and breathe, listen to yourself. Back in my precinct after all these years. What happened? That's just crazy. Finally sick of all that California what? sunshine. My girls got worried about the scratching noise. I might start committing them. them. You met Detective Benson? Those dogs there. I did. She's good. Definitely easier yeah. on the eyes than Lenny Briscoe. Yeah, but she's uh, made of steel. That's who makes Don't all those noises. Rain. Wouldn't dream of it. The monsters. Welcome back. Thanks. I pull it on silence hey, detection on the microphone as well, what and the hell? What's wrong? It just doesn't the work. The voicemails. They're all gone. Someone <gasps> deleted them all. And odds are, it wasn't our victim. Looks like her carrier is Mercury Wireless. The trouble is, it's Keith on Lambda Foreign down in as well. Told me they've they had some problems with security recently. Tap all around. Right. Mercury Wireless Company policy is pretty clear. I can talk to you up to a certain point, but if we go over, I have to involve corporate counsel. They've instructed me to answer your questions and give you access to any relevant data. Understood. Thanks for you've your time. You've been caught. Yeah, have you been caught? Yeah, you've been caught on camera. You, you can't get away with it now. You've been caught. They all know it's you. They all know it's you now. You can't get away with being anonymous anymore. Oh, what's going on with that camera? Right. Okay. Um, phone records. We're going to need to check all activity on the phone over the weekend. This isn't Big Brother, despite what you might think. We do track calls, text messages, and data downloads. Ah, the floor's every single fine. Interaction. Floors really? are fine. You sure about that? Well, there are other records, but those are internal and restricted. I'm not authorized to show you those. But... He is. Um... Does the council already authorized him to help us as much as we needed you said council already authorized you to show us yeah any relevant baby records. i'm good How about it mr gray well i am go on bed Oi. don't ignore me what oh, damn dogs um deleting voicemails voicemails off a of phone remotely sure that's a feature we offer how would they do it easy you just need to have the account PIN number, just like your bank ATM. Um... No, she was dead. Precisely. She was already dead. Uh... yep. That's a red herring. Um, who could who ask? Had access to Rachel Trevino's voicemails. Um, according to our account record, only Ms. Trevino. There's no one else listed here. The only other persons with authorized access are myself, our customer representative team, and a few independent technical contractors. Um, no, he's not. Um... Um. Oh. Dang it. Okay. What about illegal access? Hacking into the account? Hard to say. Because that'd be illegal. Um. Let's have a look at those restricted records, Mr. Gray. We prefer not to share those personal customer records. It can project a negative corporate image. It would be a complete invasion of our customers' privacy. You guys need a warrant. Um. 
Yes. She's dead. Um. Yeah, baby. I'm getting good at this. How about we go get that warrant? Then we can search your restricted records and it all goes public at trial. How do you think your customers will like finding out you kept secret information about them? Oh my god. Uh, all right. Okay, dude, right. you take it I'll easy. It Sleep well. Um, so if no one at Mercury did this, access. could someone have hacked into the account? We work very hard to maintain the integrity of our system. So no recent problems with break-ins or hacking? Our security is very good, Detective. You didn't answer her question. No hacking at all. None. We've never had a single security breach. Um, no. Because, um... Who is it that told us about it? Um, somebody told us about it. Oh, who told us about it? Um... Somebody told us that... Um... Uh, where is it? Ray Curtis. Somebody told us. Was it back here? Pete Shanahan. That's why. Pete Shanahan. I knew. I knew Detective it. Detective Shanahan already informed me you've had problems with break-ins. Well, we didn't want this to go public. But yes, we Too are aware late. of some issues. What happened exactly? Attacks on the customer data, pin numbers being stolen, that sort of thing. We're conducting a murder investigation, Mr. Gray. We need to know what happened to those voicemails, and we need to know now. Sure, we can go get a warrant if that makes you feel better. But by that time, more of your customers might end up dead, like Rachel Trevino. That makes for a very negative corporate image. All right. There's no record of who exactly deleted the voicemails, but honestly, someone modified her account about two weeks ago. Who? This is embarrassing, but it was one of her own contractors. He's a bit of a hacker. Mm. He could have accessed her information. He did not have company permission to do this. But why? He's Does a he strange guy it? detective, very Maybe? intense. His name is Tom Newberry. Here's his contact number. Okay, Tom. One thing, you might not want to call from your precinct. Oh, why not? Tom knows how to crack caller ID. He always knows who's calling and from where. Thanks for the tip. Thank you for the tip. Um. Oh, we didn't. F oh, we didn't find the red herring because we didn't go looking for it. I could have. I could have done the red herring if I wanted to. Weird place for an interview, Curtis. Witness requested we meet here. He thinks it's all a big game. I get the impression he's young. His mom answered the phone when I first called. <laughs> he's Speaking mommy. of games, good cop or bad cop? Bad cop, definitely. Suits me. I like to be the good cop. Call me anonymous. We already have your name and phone number, dumbass. Yeah, dumbass. <laughs> um... We talked to some people at Mercury Telstar. You have a reputation there. People said you're good. Too good, maybe. We thought you might have done something illegal, but they said their security is way too tough for you to crack. <laughs> Please, I wrote their security. The firewalls, the protocol encryption, it's all me, detective. So, you could crack a voicemail account? Stupid easy. What about deleting voicemails? In my sleep, detective. And what did Mercury Telstar think of that? Uh... <laughs> yep, dumbass. You just... stung yourself for that one. Um... Really? What's going on for that? Um... Really? Stupid ass. Dream configuration is acceptable. Hmm, maybe I'll need to check that. I'm not dropping any bites, so... so. Oh, right, um, 
alibi. Where were you on Saturday night? Everywhere. Tom, we can go downtown right now if that's how you want to play it. Sorry, I was online. On a raid. Anyone corroborate this? About 20 warriors in my guild. Let me rephrase. Did anyone real see you? My yeah. mom? My mom. I live with her. She was there the whole time. Um, plausible alibi, yes. Geek. Mom. Yep. We already know he lives with his mom, so... Yeah, I talked to your mom on the phone already. She know you're out this late? Hilarious. Right, uh, Rachel. Did you know Rachel Trevino? She mentioned your name on her blog. She did? Oh my god, really? What'd she say about me? Does she like me? Does that she, she want to meet? you? You sure you didn't know her? Or want to know her? I mean, you're smart, Tom. Well, he thinks All you had to do alive. was hack in, learn her secrets, so... get close. No, 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 it's not like that. But she still wouldn't have you. It drove you crazy. And then, things just got out of control. It's not your fault. Am I right? Wait, what's not my fault? What are you talking about? Look, you gotta believe me. I didn't know this girl. I don't know any girls. I am... yep. I'd believe him on that one. Um. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna go with my gut on that one. It's okay, Tom. I believe you. We believe you. Calm down. Rachel was killed the other night. I just had to make sure you weren't playing us. Um, FTPs. So, Tom. How many Let's talk about FTPs. FTPs do you have? Where did you learn that word? You're using that word wrong. FTPs. Do you have them? Someone taught you a computer word and you're using it wrong. Just stop. <laughs> yeah, well, we found a red, <laughs> we found a red tang ring. Yes, we did. Why would your old company accuse you of hacking? Mercury Telstar hates me. They'll accuse me of anything. I'm a rogue anarchist activist. Those accounts are my playground. And you hacked Rachel Trevino's. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Why, why are you asking? Your mm. old company seems to think you did, and you apparently possess the skills. No, I don't. I look. I, You've so already admitted that you did. Gotten through their firewall, right? No way. The protocol encryption alone so is way beyond my skill. Um, no, I don't believe him. He's already admitted to us. Um, yeah, baby, correct again. You're lying, twerp. Totally not lying, detective. Remember how you were bragging on how you wrote the security? Oh, <laughs> dumbass. Right. Well, that gives you means. Now we just need motive and opportunity. Hey, wait a second. You didn't Mirandize me. Oi. I know my rights. Enough. Tom, this is just an interview, not an arrest. No. So sorry. Miranda doesn't apply. Here, have some biscuits. Um, here. There we go. Have some biscuits. So, why would a nice guy like you want to delete voicemails? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. First, can I chase this guy? Tom, I think you're starting to irritate my partner. You like games, Tom? Let's play a game. It's called Detective Benson Likes You for a Murder. I throw you in jail and you try to survive as long as you can against the drug addicts and the gang members who live there. You can post the results on your blog. I can picture the Facebook update now. I, I just, Me, <laughs> I would just okay, say... Okay, okay. There was another reason. Shut up. Would it surprise you to learn that the internet was developed by the Department of Defense? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a weapon is what it is. But weapons no, it? are harmless when dismantled. You're lying. My mission is to take the internet and explode it into a million pieces. But then what will you do on Saturday nights? Well, there's always Dungeons and Dragons. Let's get back to <laughs> Rachel Trevino. Red herring, yep. Found a red herring. What is this another reason? Well, I was paid to access the account, of course. By who? I, I don't want to say. You better say. 
Or do we need to call your mom and tell her you're running a hacking ring out of her basement? Oh, Jesus, no. Look, don't get her involved. That woman has enough problems. These people are powerful. Names. We need names. I don't know their names. But you know yes, they're powerful? Do. How does that work? Yes, she well, did. We only did business you over know the phone. Name. Uh, they had their caller ID blocked, so I, you know, I, I never knew their name. No. Yeah, baby. I'm getting good You're at this. You're a terrible liar, Tom. I'm getting absolutely good at this. Your old boss told us you know how to crack caller ID codes. You know those names, and you're gonna tell us one way or another. Oh. You know what? Playtime is over. You better start coughing up solid answers, or I'm throwing you in Rikers, and your mom will have to spend her last cent to post your bail. Okay, okay, okay. But listen, I only hack the accounts to sell the voicemail passwords. Why? Passwords? Plural? Yeah, I did a lot of them. Celebrities, politicians, you name it. Then I sold the passwords to this lady named Gwendolyn Scott. She's like a PR flack. Did she ask you to mess with Rachel's account? Yeah, I figured it was corporate espionage or something. You know, what do I care? Let the capitalist pigs brawl in the mud. Who's it gonna hurt? Rachel Trevino. Have a great night, Deep Throat. Deep Throat, <laughs> that is so wrong term for that. <laughs> Good night, Deep Throat. And subpoenas coming. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Good night, Deep Throat. We're going to start by what we call defining your moment. Gwendolyn Scott? Yes. I'm Detective Ray Curtis. This is Detective Benson. We need to talk to you for a minute. So sorry. I'm busy. I'm so sorry. It's important. I'm so busy. My client is important. You can call my office. You know, a guy named Tom Newberry just gave me this girl's number. PR flack. She likes to buy voicemail passwords and blackmail her clients. Maybe I'll call her instead. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> was that fun, Detective? Yes, Sometimes, it was. I like to play rough. Yes, well, it was. So do I. But a little charm can go a long way. Sorry, I promise this will only take a moment of your time. You're a busy girl. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I promise I won't make up extra questions as an excuse to talk to you longer. All right, Romeo, settle down. Ask away. Okay. What kind of business do you do, Miss Scott? The PR biz is a very careful, very delicate balance between what you know, what you say, and who you say it to. There was this one guy. Right. He used to be major A-list, now he's major A-hole. Anyway, he crashed his car outside Savannah, stinking drunk and out of his mind on PCP. I mean, who does PCP anymore? That's so like He gets out, strips last all his year? clothes off, and flags down a car full of college students. Well, by the time they got to Daytona Beach, they had two hours of him ranting about Canadians on their cell phone cameras. I had to pay them each $10,000 for the phones and footage. I would charge grand. you more. And on top of that, I had to pay out for damage to the car seats due to excessive sweating. Enchanting story, Miss Scott. <laughs> Does the name Rachel Trevino mean anything to you? No. Should it? She was murdered last night. We found her body at the Parkview Regency. Bloody oh, dogs. Poor girl. As if life isn't tough enough for housekeeping. Is there something wrong with what she just said? Hmm. No. Oh! Damn it! I didn't say anything about her being with housekeeping. I must have read it in the paper. Nothing's been released to the Damn papers it. yet. I missed that it one. It must have been gossip. You know how these things get around, detective. 
I'm experiencing high CP usage. How am I experiencing high CP usage? Hmm? How? Come on, tell me how. Um, no, I don't. I don't believe her at all. Tom Newberry already told us you knew her. Oh, that, Rachel. Of course. My mistake. I can be such an airhead. Do you know Tom Newberry? No. <laughs> oh my god, really? Such a dumbass. He says he knows you. That's how we got your name. A lot of people know me. Do a lot of people call you? Not the right people. Oh, god damn it. Stop flirting with me. Stop flirting. So if I look up your phone records and Tom Newberry called you, and you talked to him more than once, now, would I be crazy to think you're lying to me? I'd say you were just jealous. Oh, why? I'm jealous. No, she's not cooperating. Yeah. Deflecting every question. Um, she hasn't answered any... S any questions truthfully or whatsoever. I'm not the jealous type, Miss Scott, and I don't like playing games. You knew him. Fine. Yes, we did business. I paid him for insider information. Payment. You paid Tom for what exactly? Passwords. I paid Tom for access to voicemail accounts. So you could delete Rachel Trevino's voicemails? Look, I really Why? shouldn't say. Did you want to keep her quiet? Miss Scott, were you involved in her murder? No, no, I did delete Rachel's voicemails, yes, but... I did it for someone else, on someone else's orders. Understand? Um, yes. I do believe on that one, actually. Um... Um, Tom has confirmed she paid access to the account and he never personally deleted. Yeah, baby! Alright, I'm listening. Why don't you tell me a little more? I'm getting Was better at this. Involved? Um, someone else. Who asked you to delete the voicemails? A client. I really can't tell you. I'm gonna find out anyway. I'm actually pretty good at this detective thing. <sighs> well... Crap. I guess it's all over for me anyway. Here's the deal. I gave Rachel's password and voicemails to my usual buyer, Alexander Baron. Alexander Baron, as in CEO of Wider Media? The Russian guy who owns like half the television stations in America? The very same. Baron bought Rachel's voicemail access for me a few weeks ago and then told me to delete them all. Okay, yes. I believe her on that because it just sounds ridiculous. Um, um, no, damn it. Miss Scott, why was Alexander Baran interested in Rachel Trevino? She's a maid, she's a Russian billionaire. I don't get it. Rachel Trevino was not a hotel maid. She was an activist, a blogger, and she had uncovered some dirty, dirty secrets about Alexander Baran. He's Why do they a very choose now boy detective. to have an argument? What did she find out? Why? Baron has a Why problem now? keeping it in his pants, especially when it comes to housekeeping staff. We've had to cover up a few unsavory encounters. Rachel tried to set up a sting going undercover at the hotel, and I honestly don't know what happened after that, but I think she got in over her head. Did Baron kill her? Maybe and we should have looked at the notebook. this is where my lawyer would advise me to keep my mouth shut. Come on, Gwen. Now it's Gwen. I like that. Okay, look. All I'm gonna say is the Parkview Regency Hotel has a front desk, right? Ask them who stayed there on Saturday. 
Okay. Um, so we, we, we kind of flunked this one. We didn't get any bonus stars. Um, damn it. Oh, well. That was Cormac at the precinct. Alexander Baran was a guest at Parkview Regency the night Rachel was killed. He checked out earlier today, and he's on his way to MacArthur Airport. He's got a private jet and an appointment in London. Well, he's going to be late. Gonna arrest that bad boy. Mr. Wait. Baran! Mr. Baran! Detective Curtis, NYPD. We need to talk to you about the murder of a hotel maid over the weekend. A maid? Are you serious? I'm leaving for London. No, you're not. Look like about an inch and a half to you, Ray? Sure does. Where the weapon? Mr. Alexander Baran, you are under arrest for the murder of Rachel Trevino. You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, baby. I get you. I don't know why we are wasting time here. I'm a Russian. I have diplomatic immunity. We did a little research on you, Mr. Braun. Rachel's blog was a very interesting read. Just because you're Russian, how does you have diplomatic Executives immunity? at your own company? Is there any woman you wouldn't hit is, on? Is there such your a mom? thing? Miss Benson, I am a handsome, virile man. I, I am handsome. Power. Women are attracted to it despite themselves. Here's a clue. When a woman is attracted to you, she does not slap you with a sexual harassment lawsuit. You've had 12. Mm. I'm a flirt. I get slapped with all sorts of things. I bet you do. I bet you Did you know Rachel you Trevino? Do. No. We have DNA evidence that says you did. What kind of evidence? A rape kit. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. It was completely consensual. So you do know her? You cops think you have it all figured out. Guess what? We were lovers. Um, yes he is. Damn right he is. Um, the hotel maid. Yeah, baby. I'm getting good at this. I'm not buying it. I'm going to become a de Charlie. detective. An earlier witness already told us Rachel didn't a have a boyfriend. I'm going to become and one. And you lied about knowing her just now. That's two strikes. A jury might see it different. When I left the room, that girl was alive. Okay. Uh, voicemails. You had access to Rachel's voicemails, and you destroyed them to cover up your connection. Not true. I never touched the voicemails. Is this a true statement? Um... I don't know. Is did that other girl do the deleting for him? Right, that's what I thought. Uh, Gwendolyn Scott deleted the voicemails. That is right. That the nice try. Gwen Scott told us she deleted the voicemails on your orders. You're guilty as sin, Baron. If you say so. Rachel knew all about you. She was gathering evidence about you, about unreported assaults. I wouldn't know anything about that. I never even heard these voicemails you're so very concerned about. Okay. Um. Machismo. What the fuck's machismo? Um. Old lawsuits? You've had 12 lawsuits? Yes, what of it? They were all resolved. I'm just impressed. I mean, you gotta be some kind of gentleman to cause that much noise. I appreciate your sarcasm, but I'm not allowed to discuss the details of my settlements. I found a red herring. I think that's gonna be a red herring as well. You didn't come well. forward when you heard about the murder. I had no reason to. A maid is killed. How is this my business? She was your girlfriend. Ah, but you say she is not detective. Seems like you were trying to avoid this investigation. No, I had every intention of cooperation. In fact, when you found me, I was on my way to see my lawyer. Uh-huh, and your jet. He's on vacation in Florida. Okay. 
Nope. He was going to London. That's right. That's right. Can't fool you me. You said you were headed to London. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Moscow from there. And then, you'd be out of our reach. Your knowledge of geography is so American. So American. You know, killing the witness to a crime gets you an automatic upgrade to murder one. What crimes? What witness? Rachel had evidence on you, Braun. She knew what you were up to. She wasn't a witness to anything. Those voicemails were about an expose, a plan to blackmail me. I'm probably actually believe that uh, I heard about. Does this prove his innocence? No. You're lying, Doesn't. and we can prove it. Um. We can try and get the gold that we haven't been able to get in so long. No, I don't want that. Sharp. Uh, Rachel made it clear in her blog that she disliked Barn. Yeah, that was a pure guess. That was a total. You just told us you never pure heard those voicemails, guess. so there's no way you could know what they were about. You heard them, and you know it. You're looking better and better for this murder with every lie that comes out of your filthy mouth. That was a pure, pure guess. Um, I'm just making certain. Uh, you mentioned blackmail. Are you being blackmailed? Why, yes. Why aren't you investigating the criminals behind this whole operation? Who? I'm very certain it's the Russian mob. I won't share my money with them, which they did not earn. So they want me embarrassed and disgraced. I wouldn't cough up a ruble for those thugs. That's enough from you. Let's get back to the murder. Red herring, yeah, by red herring. Right, alternative so theory. Say, maybe this girl, Rachel, maybe she liked it a little rough. And you obliged. Consenting adults, right? Sure, completely consenting. And the cane could have been involved. Could have been. Let's talk Tell about me the, how cane. the cane. Fits into this scenario. Was it an accident? I'm sure it must have been. Did she ask you to use it? Yes, she asked me to do it. It was her idea. She liked that kind of thing, I guess. To do like what? I said, it was all consensual. This girl was kinky. She saw my cane. She wanted to try it. She was an adult. So you admit it? No. No. Do you have evidence? Yes, we do. Of course we do. Um... Yes, baby! <laughs> I'm getting good at this. The bruise line I from Rachel's neck matches your cane. This. You just said she asked you to choke her out. No, I'm not admitting anything to you people. Come on, Baron. An innocent girl is dead. You want to be macho? You want to be a man? Why don't you tell the truth for once? Do you want to be a man? You better wipe that smug smile Admit off it. your face before you Admit get to the Miss Miss Bench, you. I'm innocent of this offensive charge. My lawyers will have this all thrown out, and my country will protect me. Really? We can place you at the murder scene. We can connect you to the victim and her voicemails. Yep. And your cane is a match for the murder weapon. Yep. Now might be a now good what? time to panic. That's a hell of a lot of evidence to throw out. That's why I have a hell of a lot of lawyers. Don't worry, I'll be out in a few days. Then maybe I'll call you, baby. Gosh, you are just not my type. Come on, Ray. Let's go get a bite. Mr. Baron can stew in his own ick for a while. Let's go get a bite. Um, right, so we, we got all of them, got them, and we found two red herons as well. I do
The district attorney's office takes a dim view of rape and murder in our city, Mr. Baran. Your defense contends you have diplomatic immunity, but the Russian consulate says you only have limited immunity. My status protects me from prosecution of any crime committed in the course of my diplomatic mission. I met Ms. Trevino in the capacity of a Russian media expert as a diplomat. Okay, then. Did you meet Rachel Trevino at the Parkview Regency? She said she worked there, so we agreed to meet. And instead, you slept with her. Yes. Women are attracted to me, Ms. Carmichael. Not all of them. Objection! Withdrawn. Okay. <laughs> um... Immunity or walking cane. Let's talk about so your immunity. your immunity status is based on your acting as a diplomatic agent. But this is the first we've heard that you were meeting Rachel Trevino in that capacity. She wanted to compare Russian business philosophy to American. She mentioned that aspect specifically to me. Are you sure she didn't have something else in mind? Was Rachel investigating other aspects of your business, Mr. Baran? No. No, he's not. Um. No. And then. Uh... Yes. Oh, yes. Our detectives investigated Rachel's blog. She was gathering evidence that you were a sexual predator. Oh my god! That was for my daughter, you bastard! Bailiff, restrain that man! Order! Order! Someone grab him! How, how am I gonna win the case now if he went and shot her? Shot him? God damn it! Judgment Day. Hero Dad Gets Revenge. Taking care of business, father does what court cannot. American justice. The headlines go on. The people love this guy. Chavez Trevino. He killed the smug bastard who killed his daughter. Of course they love him. How the hell did he get a gun into the courtroom? This is gonna get messy quick. I say we charge him with voluntary manslaughter and let it go. Abby? You know what keeps me up at night? What if his aim was off? Just slightly. I wouldn't even be here to answer your question, Jack. You're right. I'm not setting a precedent for street justice in our courtrooms, despite what the people think they want. Right, okay. Prove it was premeditated. Hit him with murder one. You got it, boss. Really? I got prove that he premeditated murdered. How did your client plead, Ms. Mullins? Not guilty. Be advised, we're going to mount a diminished capacity defense. The defendant is a Gulf War vet who suffers from chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. We will show that Mr. Trevino was under extreme emotional distress at the time of the shooting and is therefore not eligible for murder one. Any issues, counselor? None, your honor. Defense has briefed us already. This doesn't change anything. We're moving ahead with murder one. Focus on the premeditation. Right, okay. Right. Uh, shooting. Right. Okay then. Focus on the shooting and not public outcry. Okay. Following your questions, break down a story. Good luck. Right. Okay then. Can you tell us definitively who shot Alexander Baran? Without a doubt, the defendant Chavez Trevino shot him. I looked to see Mr. Trevino standing up with a smoking gun in his hand, literally. And can you identify him for the court? Sitting right there. That's your shooter. Yes, it is effective. Just pointed straight. Right, watch the scales of justice meter to see whether the jury is siding with you or the defense. Perform well and corner scales will tip in your favor. Perform poorly and the scales will favor the defense. No. The further the scales are tipped in your favor, the more likely the jury is to convict. It also gives you more power when it comes to the plea bargain. Okay then. Uh, Detective Benson knows a great deal about handguns. There was an eyewitness to the murder. 
she was an eyewitness to the murder, of course. Please let the record show the detective pointed at the defendant. Okay. Um, the gun. Detective, how exactly did Mr. Trevino get a gun into the courtroom? Aren't there security measures? We're still investigating how he breached security. But he claims he stuffed it into his jacket and simply walked through. How difficult would it have been to get past security? Mr. Trevino had to avoid metal detectors and checkpoints covering every entrance. What would it take to get past all that security, Miss Benson? Forethought, planning, and intelligence. Mr. Trevino had to keep his cool and his wits about him at all times. Yep. Nope. Because it's helping us because we need to... So why is Kerben... To establish that Tavino was not under extreme emotional distress when he acted. Uh, that's the one. That's the one we want. Actions inconsistent with someone under emotional distress. In my view, yes. After the shooting, Mr. Trevino made a voluntary statement to you about why he shot Mr. Baran. True? Yes. What did he say? He said Mr. Baran had to die. He said Mr. Baran was going to claim immunity, escape prosecution, and run back to Russia. Okay. That's a red herring. We're not allowed to click on that What one. else did he say? He said the courts were weak, powerless. He said the only justice he wanted was a death sentence. So, his motive was less about avenging his daughter's murder and more about exacting the type of justice he wanted to see. Objection. Withdrawn. Good job. Right. Is there any doubt as to the circumstances of the shooting, Detective? None. Mr. Trevino shot the defendant in front of witnesses and admitted to the murder afterward. I wish every case was as simple. Thank you, Detective. Your Honor, the people rest. No further questions for this witness. All right, for this testimony, the jury sides with the prosecution. You won by plus 50%. Uh, overall, the jury likes your case a little bit. You're ahead by 50. Right, okay. We're ahead by 50. Uh, Christina Mullins is the defense attorney you are facing today. Your job is to object when she gets out of line. Here are two tricks she likes to use. She will disguise comments as questions such as are we really supposed to believe this lie? This is argumentative. Right, okay, so maybe we need a bit of paper here. I think we're gonna need a bit of paper here. Um, Cause I, I think, I, I think we, we're gonna become a lawyer now. We've done the policeman, we're gonna become a lawyer and we've got to object. So argumentative, because obviously we're going to have to give a reason why we are objecting is comments uh, comments as questions we are probably gonna suck at being a lawyer but we're gonna try and the other one she will insult you with by she will ins also insult your witness by calling them low life or criminal and this is badgering so badgering, um, badgering, so insults, okay, right, okay, <laughs> this is going to go so wrong, isn't it? At the moment, we're plus 50 with the jury, and I reckon if we mess up here, we could lose this case. So remember, badgering is insult, argumentative is when Mullins cast doubt on a testimony disguised as a question. Right. Detective Benson, okay. you testified that you saw the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shoot the victim. No, I testified that I turned around and saw Mr. Trevino with a smoking gun in his hand, about a second after I heard the shots. So you didn't actually see him do the shooting? Are we supposed to believe you're a relevant eyewitness? Yes. Objection. Um, argumentative. Um, argument argumentative. Sustained. Yes. Ms. Mullins, enough with the rhetoric. 
Yeah, baby. Immediately after the shooting, what did Mr. Trevino look like? I don't follow you. Was he composed? Calm? He was in possession of himself. Wasn't he yelling out, my baby, you murdered her? He said that, yes. He was out of his mind with grief. He was coming apart at the seams and you didn't see it? Really? I don't believe you. He was upset. Um, do we object here? Um, should... No. Is your heart so cold, Detective? Are you such a robot that you can't see another human in distress? Oh, we should have... Yes. Yes. Objection. Um. Badgering. Badgering. Sustained. Yeah. <laughs> the defense can save the dramatic storytelling for its own witness. Let's try this one more time. Was my client, Chavez Trevino, visibly shaken and distressed following the shooting? Yes. Did he appear rational? Calm? No. Was his behavior at that moment consistent with a person in severe emotional distress? I... Yes. So despite any forethought or planning he might have shown previously, the defendant was clearly in distress when he fired his weapon. True? True? Yes. Thank you. That's all for this witness, Your Honor. For this testimony, the jury sides with the prosecution. We won by five, by plus five. So overall, the jury is leaning towards our case, and we're ahead by 55. <laughs> we could win this case. We could win our first case. I just got a message from Cormac. You I know hope. the gun we took off Chob Trevino? Yeah. It's a ballistics match to the one used in the Preppy Joggers murder. The joggers? What? The two kids who got killed in the park? That was in the 90s. It was 1998. Me and Lenny Briscoe caught the case, but we ran out of leads and were never able to close it. We got pulled right, off. Right, piss off. How you doing? The old man's ass you join us for the judge. Oh, oh. oh my God. Tough break. But, well, then how did Trevino get it? Yeah, good question, detective. This case has been on my mind since I got back. Then this falls Really, dogs? Lap. I feel like I owe it to Lenny. Ray, any way I can help out, I'm in. Thanks. Right, okay. Um, so we're still winning at the moment. Uh, now it's the defense turn to make their case. Uh, Christina Mullen up to roll tricks here. Two new objections for you to learn. Right, okay. Two new objections. Hearsay. So we've got hearsay. Uh, that's when a witness quotes somebody else. I already know what hearsay means. And no expert knowledge. So if they're not an expert at it, obviously. Uh, knowledge. Okay, then. So, test right, okay. And remember, sometimes knowing when not to object is just important. The correct choice may be to withdraw your objection. Mickey, in the weeks okay. after your sister's murder, how did your dad act? Crazy. My dad has PTSD again. It all came back. He needs different treatment. Um, I'd like to object. Objection. Uh, no way. Mickey Trevino is not a psychiatrist, Your Honor. He's not qualified to diagnose his father. Sustained. Mr. Trevino, please limit your comments to what you saw. Tell us the yeah, behavior baby. you observed. <laughs> he, he couldn't control his temper. He, he would like yell when the phone rang or like if a dog was barking two miles away. I didn't know what to do. When Rachel was killed, I expected him to be really sad or d depressed, but not, you know, not angry. And this behavior, had you ever seen it before? No, but my sister did. Um, yes. Objection. Hearsay. Hearsay. Regrettably, the witness's sister is deceased and can't testify to the truth of this statement. Sustained. The jury will disregard that last remark. When? After he got home oh, yeah. from the Gulf War, 1991. Pop had his troubles with the law. A felony assault charge, some other bullshit, uh, some other nonsense. 
No. Did you think he would hurt anyone? My uncle said he was getting dangerous. Um, would you like to object? Yes. Objection. Hearsay. Hearsay. Sustained. If your uncle would like to testify, then by all means. However, you may not testify for him. Do you think your father was in his right mind oh, when he this. shot gonna, Alexander Baron? I'm going to win this case. No. When my Unless we do something murdered, wrong. I tell you, it smashed something deep inside my dad. And the idea that this fat Russian bastard could walk away scot-free because of some technicality? My dad did the world a favor. Thank you, Mickey. No further questions. Oh, it's our turn now. Right, for this testimony, the jury sides with the prosecution and we won by 45. Overall, the jury seems convinced by your case. We are ahead by 100. We can do it. Yep. I, I'm I'm taking the judge home tonight. She's gonna be my bitch. Right. Your turn with Mickey Torino. See if you can make him admit he knew his father had a plan to kill. Right, okay then. Let's start with Alexander. How do you and your father feel about Alexander Baran? How do we feel? Are you freaking serious? Easy, Mr. Trevino. Sorry, Judge. We hate the man. Alexander Baran is the guy who killed my little sister. My pop said he didn't care what happened to him. He said he would gladly kill Baran so we could go to hell and kill him again. He's a fat cat with an army of lawyers ready to help him weasel out of everything he does. You know this guy. Every day you read about him. Oh, he loves to do the crime, but he does not do the time. Nope, not these boys. Right, okay then. Um, let's, let, let's talk Did about your, father try to buy a your gun father's a gun. Before the attack? Yeah, I guess. Did you try to help sign for it? Yeah, so what? Your father was convicted of felony assault in 1992. He's not allowed to have a gun. Did you know about his conviction? Nah, I, I didn't know nothing about that. A man's got a right to defend himself. No. Actually, when he's Chill a convicted out, felon, he doesn't. Right, so... Where did he get the gun he used in court? I told the cops already. I don't know where he got the gun. You sure you didn't help him? I've never seen it before. I didn't even know he had one. You sure you didn't help him get it? You are under oath, Mr. Trevino. I... I did not help him. Pop smuggled it in under his jacket. I don't know how he made it past security, but he did. Um, can we prove he is lying? Um, I don't know. Can we prove he is lying on that one? Um, let's have a quick look at the transcript there. Um, uh, uh, Right. Right. Yes. No, we lie. He was not lying. Oh no. <laughs> he was not lying. Did you know Alexander Baron claimed he didn't kill your sister? Does that bother you? No, I know he did it. How? You could just tell. But now you can never know for sure. No one can. You didn't let a court decide. You didn't let a jury decide. I decided. And my dad decided. We wanted justice. That sounds like vengeance, not justice. Sometimes they're two sides of the same coin, Mr. Cutter. Oh, so we're flipping coins now? Red Heron. No. Oh, no. Did you ever hear your father threaten to kill Baran? Hurt? Yes. I don't, I don't want to lose kill? this, Kate. No. Oh, can we prove he's like... Yes, we can. Because he's already admitted that he... Wasn't it the bottom? Uh, da -da -da, where is it? I'm sure in here he said he would 
Uh, where is uh, seen it before? Where is it? Yeah, he's already said here that he would gladly kill his uh gladly kill. That's the one. That's not true. You just told us your father said he'd like to quote kill Baran and go to hell so he could kill him again. That was that and again was like a just and a gladly kill him. speech or the truth. Why didn't you get help for your dad? He seemed rational. So he was in control? Enough so that you weren't worried? Yeah, I wasn't worried. So where's the PTSD? I guess I didn't see it then. So maybe he didn't have it. That's not what I meant. He did. So why didn't you get him help? Either you saw he was out of control and you did nothing, or you saw nothing. Hey, there was, there was no way to know what my dad was going to do. He was crazy. How could I possibly have known it would come to this? Of course he could have known. Because he's been told. He, he said. Um. Uh. Yes. <laughs> he already had a felony assault That's it. in his past. I'm going to become a solicitor a and in Scotland, and I'm going to prosecute myself for killing somebody. I'm going to win as you well. You want us to believe your dad just snapped? You say he hated Alexander Baran, knew in his heart Baran was guilty. He tried to buy a gun but couldn't. Sorry, so piss off. You're going to some other way. Then he smuggled I'm good at this now. security, stayed cool until he had a fair shot, and fired an accurate pattern right into his intended victim. Now, Mickey, does that really sound like someone who just suddenly snapped? Objection! Withdrawn. None of this would have happened if people acted right. Yeah, right, so talk, a nasty God, blog talk. And this guy, Baron, kills her. My dad's going out of his mind, and his doctor goes on frickin' vacation. Vacation, can you imagine? It ain't right. Everybody fails us, and we gotta suffer for it. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. So we're still ahead by 100, even though we messed up. Thank God for that. So uh, are we, are we going to get the verdict back now? Oh, right. The defense is going to introduce some new tricks. So it's time to brush up on your objections and learn a new one. Oh, excuse me. Remember hearsay? Yep, yeah, we remember hearsay. Also remember no expert knowledge. Yep. Yeah. Uh, here's your new one. Speculation. When a witness speculates about what might have happened theoretically. This is not admissible evidence in court. Right, okay. Mr. Trevino, why did you shoot Alexander Baron? <laughs> he murdered my daughter. He was going to go free. He was going to walk. I'm sure that's what she said. Um, yes. Objection. Speculation. The witness can't know whether Mr. Baron was guilty or whether he would have gone free because he stopped the trial dead. Sustained. Can you tell oh, us yeah. about Alexander Baran's diplomatic immunity? Hey, I'm not a lawyer, but I know what that means. He just gets to skate. The law says he can run off to Russia. Um. Is. Would, would we like to eat? Really? Um. Yes, he's. Objection. No. I... Witness stated he wasn't a lawyer. The diplomatic immunity rules are actually very complex, Your Honor. Alexander Baran's status was still under review even at the time of the trial. Sustained. Oh, Mr. Trevino, oh, oh, yes. can you take us back to 1991 are you, are you gonna... and your experience after the Gulf War? Right, we're yeah, going to talk I about the war was now, a ranger in Iraq. I, uh, I saw a lot of stuff. When I got back home, I had some uh, trouble settling in. What kind of trouble? I was never a violent guy before, but suddenly anything could set me off. Uh, I fought all the time. I, I couldn't sleep. My wife divorced me. I wanted to die. Um. Oh, is uh. 
Is there anything there we could, uh, know? And what did the army say? The doctors said I had PTSD. They, uh, they said it interfered with my ability to regulate my emotions. So I joined a therapy group. I took meds for a while for the depression. Got myself back together. What might have happened if you hadn't had therapy? I don't know. Maybe gone crazy. Maybe hurt somebody. Uh, I might have really. She's actually like I did winning this case court. for us. Um. Um. Objection. Um. Uh, speculation. Calls for speculation. Defense is asking the witness to relate an imaginary scenario. Sustained. Let's focus on reality, Miss Mullins. But you got yourself back together. You lived a normal life. So what happened recently to bring it all back? Rachel. Your daughter was tragically murdered, and the main suspect appeared to you to have diplomatic immunity. Um... Uh, would you like to... No. She was my beautiful baby girl. He had no right! How could this happen in the 21st century in America? An innocent girl gets killed, the cops pin the blame on this scumbag, and still... He might walk away. As a man, as a father, I couldn't let that happen. She looked to me to protect her. All her life, I, I was a daddy, right? And I failed. You did. And you failed. You didn't protect her when she needed it most. What use is all your legal garbage if you can't put a killer behind bars? That's so, right. As Talk a father, yourself into it was jail. Up to me Talk to yourself that into it. To right. Go on. Because no one else was gonna. Now my baby oh, girl to object to it. some kind of dignity. Nope. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Not anymore. And sorry for your loss. Mr. Cutter, your witness. Uh, defense requests a short recess, Your Honor. We wish to confer with the people about a plea deal. Oh, well, make yes. It quick. <laughs> We're all on pins and needles. Right, so. Um, we don't need to take a plea deal here. Mike, Abby, let's not let a grieving father go to jail for the rest of his life. Can we talk deal? Depends. What are you offering, Christina? One year in county plus probation. You no. give us the time. He doesn't belong in jail. You're kidding, right? He's a killer. I got the blood stains on my jacket to prove it. Here's our counter offer. If the scales are just show you prefer to stream loyal, you might try for the maximum sentence of murder to 25 years if you're less confident however consider a lesser charge that both of you in the defense feel is appropriate remember if scales don't favor you defense like to reject uh, um ooh, should we go should we go for the full 25 years come on do, do we do 25 years or do we go 10 years? I mean, yes, we know the guy pretty much killed his daughter and we probably all do the same, shoot him. But should we go for 25 years because he did it in court when we were trying the case? 10 years. I'm going to give him 10 years. Man one. Man one. 10 years in general population, but no parole. You do all the time. Every day of it, Mr. Trevino. You got yourself a deal, Mike. We'll have the papers drawn up. The people have agreed to a plea and a sentence for the defendant, Your Honor. Then I thank the jury for their service. Counsel, I will see you at the sentencing hearing on Monday. Mr. Cutter, Miss Carmichael, I, I just wanted to say thank you for the deal. I know what I did was wrong, but Rachel was a beautiful person. She was smart. She was going places. She wanted to help the world. You know, make it a better place. But this bastard just walked into a life and ended it all. And you walked into a courtroom and ended his life. Why can't the law protect us? From who? Alexander Baron? Or you? Oh, yeah. Ray, thought you'd be out having a drink. Nah, I'm going through some old files on the preppy case. Trying to tie the gun to Trevino? And coming up cold. I wish Lanny was still around. He was good at this kind of thing. Well, this ought to cheer you up. Turns out, Mickey Trevino is an HVAC contractor for the city. Okay. 
Guess where he did a midnight repair 24 hours before the Alexander Baran trial? Superior Court. He snuck the gun into an air duct. Shall we go have a word with him? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was episode one. And we're so amazingly good at this. Um, can... Oh, God. I was about to say, can we not skip this? Oh... Really? We've got to go back to the beginning. Right. So... Home to Roost. That's where we are now. Episode 2. Um, detective Rank Rookie. Attorney in... Uh, oh. um, just... Really did Ace Detective, Assistant DA. Look at that. Yes, we offered him a plea deal. Why not? Right, let's get on. Well, we, we probably could have just went straight to trial on that one. But never mind. Let's let's get into this one. In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Right. Coming, sweetie. Shh, shh. Mommy's here, Noah. Um, the zombies are coming? Neil? The zombies that are you? coming. Playing Walking Dead. Who is it? Is it her husband? Did you see anything when you opened the door? Anybody on the street? A car? No, nothing at all. At first I thought it was some kind of prank, but then I looked down and saw... Neil. Oh, it was okay, her husband. Okay, yeah. that's, that's I, settled that for now. I, I settled that question then. Some prank. Yeah, well, sounds like he was a real cut-up. Real cut-up, so it was... Was he a dick? Was that was that the case? Was he a dick? Should we investigate any further? It's a shame it's not the real uh, voices for this. That'd be amazing if it was. What's that, goulash? Get it out of here, Ray, for God's sake. What's the matter? Doesn't smell too bad to me. No, it smells too good. Julia's got me on a health food diet. She's got this crazy idea high blood pressure is a bad thing. Sounds like a real nut. I so give it to three be weeks. You. The diet or Julia? Both. Rogers just dropped off the report on Neil Jensen. Exsanguination. Poor guy bled to death. Well, that would explain all the red stuff. Right, Lieutenant Van Buren can supply valuable information about the case. Ask her about the victim's wounds by selecting that topic button. Okay. How many cuts are we talking about? Over a dozen, but most of them are superficial. Victim bled out from a deep laceration to the femoral artery. Uh, deep laceration to the femoral. Yeah. Um, set to cause uh, fatal loss of blood. That's the one. But why, really? Why ask is such a stupid question? Uh, reveal more information about Neil Jensen. Ask her about any of these new topics. We're we gonna have a red herring in here. Time of death. Time of death? 4.17 a.m. Apparently the guy was still alive when his wife found him, but just barely. Blood trail leads down to the curb. Then disappears. What was he doing now at that well, time of night? He to die at home. When did he get wounded? Around two. Slow bleeder. Well, we've all got problems. No, he did not die instantly. Two hours? That's not instant. 
you know. Oh yeah. I'm great at this now. What do we know about the weapon? You Swiss villains out there, be right, prepared. Look, I will catch hurt. you. Like I will. Side? Our victim was done in. Arrest by you, Grim then Reaper. prosecute you, because I'm multi-talented. Apparently. Anything we can use to ID the person. I can do everything. No fingerprints. Um, but it appears some of the blood on Jensen's clothes wasn't his own. Our victim got in a few good jabs before he went down, huh? What does the lab have to say? Results aren't back yet. Any minute now. Woman. Must be the results. Van Buren. Uh-huh. Oh, look, it's a wireless telephone. There's really? no cable. How do they... That or they couldn't afford it uh -huh. in props. <laughs> uh-huh. Couldn't afford the cable. Elliptical and nucleated. Got it. Well, let us know if you find out anything else. That was the lab. Elliptical and nucleated? The red blood cells? Turns out it's not human. It's bird blood. Bird what blood. kind of bird? A dead one, I'm guessing. The victim was stabbed with a pelican. The victim was stabbed with a chicken denifer type thing. Baby. No, I don't want to replay. Continue. There's point, no, no point in replaying that. Hold off a minute, Lenny. I got something here. What? The Jensen's nanny. She's waiting to catch a bus, but I don't see it coming yet. Then let's not waste any time. Mind if we ask you a few questions? <laughs> um... Did you know Neil Jensen very well? You mean, were we lovers? Uh, that wasn't where I was going. But since you brought the subject up... No, he, he was my employer, that's all. I liked him, though. We had a lot of good talks. He was interested in stuff, you know? Oh, I hate Ideas? that. I hate that He accent. was really interested when he found out I was a Wiccan. He liked to ask questions. A Wiccan? A Wiccan. They sacrifice birds. No, it does not roll around. Roll around. Um, I haven't even talked about alibis yet. Don't they sometimes sacrifice animals, pigeons, chickens? No, we in the Wiccan community revere life in all its forms. God, people have such ignorant ideas. Nice going. People hey, so not ignorant. every hook pans out. So goddamn ignorant. Um, alibi. Where were you Wednesday morning at two a.m.? In bed. Where else? Here? I only work days. I live in bedford Stuy. Check with my parents if you don't believe me. Plausible alibi. Plausible, yes. Very plausible. Uh... Yep. Confirm with the parents. If... Jensen's marriage. Let's talk How about that. How did Mr. and Mrs. Jensen get along? Did they fight? All married couples fight sometimes, I guess. I don't plan to get married myself. I used to say that too. Yeah, I said it a bunch. Yeah, it never did me any good. But not everybody fights in front of the nanny. Press the topic. Yes. We're going to press the topic. Why? Because the nanny is cute. Because <laughs> uh, fighting in front of an alley could be a sign of serious marital tension. I'm going to become a marriage counsellor as well. As everything else. What did Mr. and Mrs. Jensen fight about when they fought? Ah, the usual. Money. I guess he was better at spending it than making it, and new babies cost a lot. He was pretty pissed when she cut off his allowance. Allowance? allowance. How old was he, 12? Hey, 
Don't tell I told you that. I want the nice as it is. Hmm, yes. There could be trouble in paradise. Uh, which conclusions is not supported by the nanny's word? There is tension between her and Mrs. Jensen. There was tension between... Not supported by the nannies. That was a pure guess. That was. Here's my bus. Gotta run. We got all we need out of her. Guess. Come on, let's talk to the widow. So we got four bonuses. Oh, that, and we found a red heron. Wow. No, I don't want to replace. Stop it. I'm sorry I wasn't much help to you last night. We quite understand, Mrs. Jensen. You've been through a terrible shock. Please call me Ellie. And I apologize again in advance. I'm going to have to cut this short when Noah wakes up at 3.55. You've got him on a schedule? It's the other way around. Wait and see. You could set your watch by him. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about... Your husband was a writer. Oh, maybe I've read some of his work. I doubt it. I didn't mean that the way it sounds. You don't by any chance subscribe to the Meta Modernist Quarterly. Oh, so yes. your husband I wasn't the about backlog. to become the next John Grisham. Wasn't that difficult for you? I mean, him not bringing in a regular income? We got by. I believed in my husband's work, detective. And thankfully, my income was sufficient to support both of us comfortably. I'm principal at PS84. PS84? What's PS84? Um, missing personal, what missing personal item? Uh, uh, let's talk Anything about Neil. Anything you can tell me about your husband's background? He had a poker problem in college when I first knew him. Junior year, I had to cover his student fees because he gambled away the money his parents gave him. Of course, that was 15 years ago, but I worried maybe he was falling back into old habits. Right, so you put him on a... Right, okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about Neil and the Nan. Yeah, let's talk Your about nan. Neil. Adam Marie Velasquez. This may be an indelicate question, but uh, your husband never... Uh... Neil liked to flirt, but he wasn't a cheater. You're sure? I know what goes on in my house. I'm sure of that. And I installed a nanny cam to make extra sure. Right. Hey. Ah, so, uh, Miss. Un Let's talk you about know where your husband find went out where last he was night? last night. I have no idea. He left the house around nine, said he'd be back late, and I shouldn't worry. But you did. Of course, but no more than usual. This did, was part of the course for Neil. With when find he's a working on up? a new story, he'll go off on research expeditions, often at strange hours, sometimes for days at a time. And he never talks about it till he has a rough draft on paper. Doesn't want anyone to influence Oops. his thought process. Oops. Drop me pen. Uh, does her statement contradict the time? No, it doesn't. Because he went away at nine. Died. Uh... That one. That's the wrong. Right, let's talk about we Neil's heard something about allowance. you cutting off your husband's allowance. No. Uh, no. I don't believe her. She looks like a liar. Uh... The nanny said Neil... Right. <laughs> what? Who told you that, Adam Marie? We're not at liberty to divulge. Oh, was that Adam <laughs> She's Marie? alluding to the fact that I took Neil's name off the savings account last week. I didn't enjoy doing it, but... Yes? When Neil was in research mode, he spent money. Well, recklessly. He'd get so caught up in his work, prudence would go out the window. I used to put up with it, but new babies are expensive. Okay, uh, any idea what Mr. Jensen wasted your money on? God knows. Like I said, he was very closed-mouthed about his research expeditions. 
Um. No, oh, no, that's too wrong. What's that noise? Our chickens, Henny, Penny, and Maxine. Chickens? You've never seen chickens in New York? Well, sure, but they usually come with biscuits and a side of mashed potatoes. You're behind the times, officers. Urban farming is the wave of the future. Fosters a connection to the earth. Plus, once you've tasted homegrown eggs, those watery factory produced things just make you gag. Mmm. Chicken blood. Chicken blood. That's One of the things we're trying to make sense of here, Ellie, is we found avian blood on your husband's clothes. Avian? Bird blood. I know what the word means. It's just very odd. That's what we thought. Maybe your husband slaughtered a chicken for dinner last night? I don't think so. He doesn't take much of an interest in them, to be honest. They're more my thing. He only helps out when it's something I can't bring myself to do. Um, like kill a chicken? Uh, about those chickens of yours, what do you mean when you say Neil would do the things you couldn't bring yourself to do? Well, raccoons got one once and he cleaned up the mess, but that was ages ago. And I made him get rid of Roger last July. Roger? A cockerel. He started out as Rebecca. See, keeping hens is perfectly legal in New York City, but it's against the law to keep a rooster. Makes sense to me. We raised our brood from chicks. And of course, all chicks look alike. They're sexed before they're sold, but the process isn't foolproof. We bought four hens. And one of them turned out to be a rooster. Right. By the time we found out she was a he, I had grown fond of him. I didn't have the heart to get rid of him myself, so I made Neil do it. Right. But like I said, that was practically a year ago. Do you know what he did with it? He took it back to the farm we got it from, in New Jersey. Cora's Cluckers. I can give you their number. They know us there. Okay. Must be a was red Was been missing anything when you found him? Any valuable personal items? His wallet? Was on him. Eight dollars and a MasterCard. His Rolex. No, I didn't mention a Rolex. No Rolex on the body. I gave it to him on our 10 year anniversary. It's engraved. He always wore it. There goes the alarm. 355. What'd I tell you? Right on schedule. Right. Try again for a better score. Uh, should we try again for a better score? Uh, no. That's how we roll. We go with the score we get. Writing in your diary? It's not a diary. It's a journal. What kind of journal? None of your business. Did you call Cora's cluckers? Yeah, she remembers Neil Jensen. Said he never brought her any roosters. She's sure? Sounds sure. Matter of fact, she was away at the state fair on the day Jensen supposedly brought the bird in. So he lied to the little woman, huh? Our victim had a questionable character. Imagine you're a husband, and not the most responsible husband in the world. That's ah. quite an imaginative leap. Your wife gives you a live rooster and tells you to yes. take it by public transportation all the way to New Jersey to get rid of it. Cock what do you fighting, do? that's what it is. Sure as hell don't take it all the way to Jersey. I dump it in the closest spot I can find and go catch a ball game. Right, and there's only so many places you can take a live chicken if you're too squeamish to kill it. Huang's Live Poultry, 1521 Barry, just six blocks from the Jensen house. Well, let's check them out. Cock fighting. That's what happened. Farm animals in the middle of Brooklyn. <laughs> I've lived in this city my whole life and it never ceases to surprise me. Oh, we serve everyone here. We've got kosher slaughter for our Jewish clients, halal for the Muslims. And if I'm in the mood for pork chops? For that, we've got a Dominican butcher. He covers all bases. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Okay, but be quick. The dinner rush is gonna start any minute. Okay. Uh this guy ever come in here? No. Look again. Mr. Huang, I thought you said you serve everyone here. How can you be so sure you haven't served him? Yeah, what I mean is everybody but wasps. His type usually like that meat wrapped in plastic. 
Okay. You slaughter your animals here on the premises? Sure, naturally. Look, my client wants to come in, select an animal, and take home the meat the same afternoon. Does your client generally want to watch the slaughter? No, that's against policy. Our abattoir's a separate space in back. Past the plastic curtain. Correct. Okay. That's not weird. Is it important? Yes. I want to look at the abattoir. Fun place to be on a Saturday night. Oh, yes. Um, employees. How many employees you got? Six. Three in front, three in back. You look into their backgrounds before you hire them? They're all citizens, detective. You sure about that? Listen, I serve immigrant customers, so I hire immigrant workers. Good workers. Just because a guy wasn't born in this country, does that make him a murder suspect? Yes, he does. That sounds like racial profiling to me. Um, yes. I'm just saying yes for the sake of saying yes now. Um. Did, did he mention murder, actually? Alright, listen, I serve immigrant customers. I hire good workers. Just because a guy wasn't born in this country, doesn't that make him a murder suspect? Ah, we we didn't we didn't talk about murder. Ah, you nearly got me on that one. I don't believe I said this was a murder investigation. Well, what else would it be? They actually gave you a license to run a slaughterhouse in the city. It's not against code? Of course I've got a license. I've been running this establishment for over 25 years, buddy. Check with the city if you don't believe me. I will. My partner doesn't know much about slaughter, except the human-on-human -human variety. I'm gonna check. Oh, we found a red heron. Okay. We'd like to take a look inside your abattoir if you don't mind. Out of the question. We're investigating a serious crime, Mr. Huang. And I'm running a business. I can't let you back there. It would violate health regulations. We won't tell the inspector. Honest. The answer is no. Not without a warrant. Um, no. We need a warrant. Yep. We need a warrant. So that we can get hey, the Wyatt. evidence we need. Uh, one moment, please. What the hell are you doing here? What are the cops doing here? Get out of here. We gotta get out of here, man. The cops. Go on, get out. I'll take care of it. Check out the Rolex. Sorry for the interruption. One of my butchers has a problem at home. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Huang, could I ask you where you got that watch? Uh, this? It's just a knockoff. I got it from a guy on Fifth Avenue. Uh, mind if I take a closer look? Now look here. Enough with the suspicious questions. I'm an American citizen and I got my rights. Okay, then you're coming to. Sounds like a no. Sounds like you're coming. Oh, I wanted to arrest him and have a look at that watch. Next time we see him, we won't see this that guy's watch. hiding something. And you're basing that on. He's wearing a Rolex. The victim's wife told us he was missing a Rolex, one he never took off. So wearing a Rolex is now illegal. He refused to let us check out the back room in his meat market. Jensen had avian blood on him. That room's the best spot in the neighborhood to find dead birds. There's something back there he doesn't want us to see. Spare me. As it stands right now, there isn't enough evidence to suggest probable cause. Give me reason to believe that there was something worse than slaughter going on in that room or you don't get a warrant. And no arrests unless you've got something physical to tie this guy to the victim. Dang it. Nina Haversham, 32, junior partner at McCormick and Preston. Wait a minute. Nina Haversham? She was one of the suspects in the preppy jogger case. So? Van Buren took us off that one. Yeah, but remember that little speech he gave back in February? All detectives are encouraged to ask about crimes they're not currently investigating. It's all about uh, spreading the widest possible net. Well, the case may be closed for now, but the net's still open.
Hey, well, happy fishing, partner. Hey, you know that meat market sells cow skulls? Now, I know that definitely isn't on your diet. Look what it says in the logs. Three weeks ago Tuesday, we got a late night complaint about noise coming from the meat market. How late at night? 1.45 a.m. Then, two weeks ago, also on Tuesday, the same noise complaint. Let me guess. Same thing happened last Tuesday. About 15 minutes before Neil Jensen was wounded. What do you think? I think we've got our warrant. I think we do as well. But for Tuesdays... All right, then. But at least let me watch. I'm sorry. It's against policy. Okay. Well, we found our bird blood. I'm still not sure what else we're looking for. Anything that'll tell us what was going on after hours Tuesday night and whether Neil Jensen was in on it. Right, okay then. Right, remember to circle objects and grab them. Click on arrows to navigate around the scene. Select the magnifying lens to consult your search screen. It contains hints on... Fine. Um, right. So, a curved blade, a saw, bloody blanket, possible murder weapon, evidence of gambling debt. Right, okay then. Um, right, evidence of gambling debt. There's some red circled lines there. Let's take this. Now we're cooking. What's that? A ledger. And I got a feeling these ain't sales of ground round in here. They look like bets. <whistles> Looks like NJ owes a bundle to EH. EH. Edward Wang. Okay. So we've got a ledger. Um, right. Uh, anything over here? Nothing else over there. Um... Right, there, there's a bloody blanket here. We we can take that. That's a hell of a lot of blood. Could have come from a pig or something, I guess, but why would you wrap a pig in a blanket? I mean, a real pig in a real blanket. Let's take it back to... All right, JJ, it's... how you doing? Long time no see. Certainly has been. Right, there's a cleaver. I think this could be our murder weapon? I don't think so. I take it anyway. Um, what else we got here... Um, that we could um, that oh okay oh there we go this could do a guy in sure but not our guy um right um that one there that's a bit bloody Van Buren said it was a short curved blade um, is that a possible, dang it, what are we looking for then? Uh, um, what's this? Can, is this something? Oh, it is. Um, oh, stop it. Hey, look at this. A short curved blade. What do you want to bet it's a match for the murder weapon? Wonder what it is. Doesn't seem like anything a it's butcher for cock fighting. Told you what it's for. Um. Oh, is. No. Right, okay then. Uh, we got three, three guesses left here, and we got to find one more. Um. Okay. Um. Can. No. Is is this gonna be one? Oh, is that gonna be one? Oh no. But no more guesses. Um. Oh, we got no more guesses. Um. Yeah, I've still got farm sim on the go as well. Um, well, 
about the bin, do you reckon? Oh, look at you that. search the garbage? Hey, nothing I like better than digging through a mound of chicken heads and feathers. There's a dead chicken. Huh, what'd you find? It's the carcass of a whole rooster. It's a big one, too. Why do you suppose Roger. they just throw it away? Maybe it died of diphtheria. Nah, it's all cut up. Sauce. Wait, let me see that blade again. Fuck fighting, that's right. I know what this is. It's a gaff. They attach these to the claws of... Hey, Mr. Huang! I think you've got some explaining to do. Yeah, hey, wait, you do. I got a lot of customers right now. We can talk out there if you'd rather. I'm sure they'll be interested to hear about how you're running a cockfighting ring. Ah, oh, cockfighting, of course. Is that... I told you this at the kosher? beginning. What do you think, Fighting. We got enough to arrest this guy? Yeah, I say we cuff him for the murder of Neil Jensen. Murder? Now wait a minute, detectives. Hold everything. Sure, it all hangs together. Jensen owed a gambling debt to Mr. Huang here, and when Jensen can't pay up, Huang starts eyeing his Rolex. I could possibly join Neil, a dedicated server. thanks for ten wonderful server. years. Ellie. You gotta believe me. I didn't kill him. Then who did? Always Ricardo like to do a Guzman. nice bit of farming every now and Where again. Where can we find him? He doesn't have a fixed address. Moves around from couch to couch. Take this guy in. Wait. I got his cell number. What luck. I'm glad you know how to follow instructions, Mr. Huang, because we've got a little Mr. job. Mr. Huang. Huang. Oh, no. We need to try again for a better score. Um, no, that's not how we roll. We, we, we have to just go with what we get. We can't redo. That's called cheating. Okay, Huang, you remember what we told you, and this ought to go down quick and painless. He's going to kill me, you know, when he finds out I'm working with the police. By that time, he'll be in custody. That is, as long as you play it cool and take your cues from us. Yeah? Ricardo, it's Wang. Hey, what's the matter, man? You sound funny. Cops had me worked up, but they're gone. The cops, they worked me over pretty hard. But you didn't say nothing. No, I've nope. not heard of that firm. one, JJ. They're gone now. They find anything? Yeah, they're on to you. Yeah, afraid so. They know everything. I diablo. Oh no. So what am I supposed to do, man? We got another fight coming Tuesday. Oh, is he a no, farming sim streamer? I'm hooked to my ah. Five grand, man, and I'm broke. Uh. Hold the fight in a new location. Better not hold the fight at the shop. Too risky. You gotta find a new location. Where, man? I don't know nobody with that kind of space. Tell him you do. I do? My cousin Lou runs a body shop in Park Slope. Let me talk to him. See, si, you're a pal, man. Okay, dude, well, you can always ask now, him. tell him you'll meet him later. Let's meet up later, once everything's squared away. Where? Uh... Um... Uh, tell me where you are. Tell me where you are. I'll meet you there. Are you kidding? Dang it. Somewhere um, by Pulaski Bridge, 6 p.m. Uh, that street corner. Over by the bodega and the pharmacy. On 21st by Pulaski Bridge. Around 6? See, si, sounds like a plan. Okay, JJ, there. no worries. You done good, Mr. Huang. We'll take it from here. Um, well, we, we kind of messed up on that one. Um... But we gotta go. We, we we've got to roll with it. We we can't. We got no redos. Wang, over here. Sorry, Wang is indisposed at the moment. Ricardo Guzman, you are under arrest for the murder of Neil Jensen. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can uh, be used Hemp Valley, right? You. Okay, then I'll have to. Mr. Guzman, I'll have to get a list of mods that you're running. So uh, I can we're prepared to plead guilty on that one. 
está insultando a la República Dominica. Let me. Uh, my client is not a murderer, Mr. McCoy. Mr. Jensen died as a result of an accident. An accident? He attempted to handle an armed bird, and he lost control of it. Really? Okay. Right. Unbelievable. A man gets carved up like a side of beef, Guzman lets him slowly bleed to death, then dumps him on a doorstep and expects to walk away. I checked with the Dominican consulate. And? He's wanted there for drug running and armed robbery. Well, I want him here for murder. Is it possible it really was an accident? Does it matter? Neil Jensen didn't have to die. Guzman had two hours to get help and he callously stood by. Murder two. Depraved indifference. Okay. Um, I'm on meant to try a cockfighting ring for murder. Hmm. Right, the defense must be desperate. They're putting Guzman on the stand. Allowing for this good defense lawyer, he will try to make Guzman appear sympathetic using a number of. Your job is to object when he gets out of line. Leading is when the defense attorney puts words in the defendant's mouth. Right, so we've got a leading one now, as well as all our other ones. Um, you can often tell a leading statement because it ends with a question like, am I right or don't you mean? Right, okay. Asked and answered. Asked and answered is when a lawyer gets his client to repeat an answer for dramatic effect. Listen closely for repetition of things you've heard before. Right, okay. Mr. Guzman, when did you first meet Neil Jensen? Maybe uh, a year ago, I guess. Who initiated the relationship? You or him? He did. I didn't want to have no part of him, man. Not at first. What I do, I gotta be careful who I let in. It can bring trouble, you know? Especially a white guy. Mr. Jensen came to you with an offer, is that right? Yeah, he had a bird and uh, he wanted me to help him raise it and fight it. And at first you said no? That's right. Yes. Um. Um. Ask. Objection! Asked and answered. Sustained. Strike that. What convinced you to take Neil Jensen under your wing, as it were, in spite of your suspicion? He knew cockfighting ain't how they make it out to be, you know? It's a more civilized practice than people realize, you mean. More civilized than... Yeah, um... Is... Leading. Objection. Leading. Sustained. Strike that. What sort of sentiments did Mr. Jensen express to you? Well, like, cocking's a real sport. It takes dedication and discipline. And you know, it can teach you a lot about okay, life JJ, if you let it. So you agreed to keep the bird and help him raise it. See, totally. together we raised El Jefe, and together we conditioned him to fight. He was a good bird. Speculation is when a witness is allowed to theorize or imagine it. I'm sure we've done speculation before. Speculation. Right, okay. Um, Why don't you tell us, in your own words, what happened on the night of Tuesday, May 5th? Well, Neil come in that night really keyed up, man. Like, super keyed up. He was jumping all around. I think maybe he was on something. Yes, I would like... Um, Speculation. Objection. Speculation. Sustained. Strike that from the record. Watch yourself, Mr. Guzman. Please confine your description to actual events. Go on. Well, he was excited, you know, because El Jefe was finally going to fight. There were some other birds up first, but he couldn't sit and watch, man, pacing around, pacing around, till his turn finally came. Okay, I tell him. I'm the handler. I'm experienced at this stuff. Let me do it. Get the bird right. into the ring. The pig, okay. yeah. It could be dangerous, you know, especially with the long heel. A long blade attached to the rooster's spur. Right, but Neil wouldn't hear nothing I was saying, man. Being he was a rider, he had to do everything himself. 
Well, right. anyway, he's yelling about how he had to be the one to handle El Jefe. I told him don't. I ordered him even, but he really got in my face about it, man, so I had to back down. Then he went for the rooster, like he was going for a football or something. Grabbed it around the neck. You understand, this is a bird who has been conditioned to fight. The bird goes crazy. It... It, it attacked Neil Jensen. Right, so you trained the bird Naturally, to attack. Naturally, you were horrified. Um, um, leading. Objection. Leading. Sustained. How did you feel? Horrified, naturally. As we approach the part of the testimony where Guzman will describe Neil's wounds, be on the lookout for statements that would require medical training. Right. And that's no I expert made a grab for the bird and got it. Putting yourself in considerable danger in the process, I imagine. Um. Um. Leading. Objection. Leading. Council is putting words in the witness's mouth. Withdrawn. But by the time I got the rooster under control, the damage was done. I see. So what then? What did you do for him? I wrap a blanket around him to try stop the bleeding. You know. Did you think to take him to the hospital? Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to do, but. He told me not to. He wanted me to take him home. Mr. Jensen asked you to take him home. And mm -hmm. why would he do His that? His wounds. I mean, he was cut up pretty bad, but not so bad as all that. He should have pulled through. That'd be no an objection. Problem. Because he's not objection. an expert. No expert knowledge. Considering the outcome, I think we can conclude that Mr. Guzman's assessment of the situation is off. Sustained. Facts only, Mr. Guzman. You swore on the Bible you'd tell the truth, Mr. Guzman. I'm telling the truth. I, I panicked maybe. You would have done the same. But I did what Neil asked me to do. Oh, yeah. What I thought would save his life. Your witness, Mr. McCoy. My witness. Right, okay. So for this testimony, the jury sides with us. Of course they would, because we are the best. Uh, so we're up 60. Um, the jury is leaning toward our case, so we are doing well so far. Mr. Guzman. Uh, so the prosecution is ready to cross-examine Guzman. Focus on inconsistencies in the evidence and his callous dis disregard for Jensen. Stay away from tricky issues like his past life or the cultural bias against cop fighting. Okay. We can do that. Right, let's do the time. The incident in question occurred on the night of May 5th. That's right. Maybe 145. 145. And you say you acted to save him? Of course I acted. I, I tried to help him right there. And when I, when I couldn't help him, I took him home. Like he asked me to. Um, no. He died at four o'clock. Um, right, that one. Yes. Oh, yes. But there's a problem here. The 911 call is time stamped 403. Two hours after the incident, Mr. Guzman. Under the circumstances, it's fair to ask. Couldn't your response have been a little more prompt? Hijos de puta mentirosos. I'm sorry, Mr. Guzman. It's a mistake. Someone's not telling the truth. Are you suggesting 911 got the time wrong? Or somebody? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, we don't want to talk about his past. We don't want to talk about that. So you we need to do that one. It was dangerous for Neil Jensen to handle his own rooster. Sure, it was dangerous. When All right, okay then. Fight, Thank man, you for that ice fight. cream. Then why didn't you stop him? I, I tried, so. man, but like I said, he wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, ooh. Oh, I look tired. Well, I, I am. I've got to stay awake until the missus comes back from the pub, unfortunately. Right. And answer right. Sure, it was dangerous, but those birds are ready to fight. Oh.
No, it doesn't contradict his previous because he told us back then. No. Uh, don't don't worry about ice cream. I'm I take it on the chin. Steph, she was in ooh, big drama. Right. Um, oh, wrong button. No. Right. Uh, relationship with Jensen. Mr. Guzman, you took Mr. Jensen into your confidence, initiated him into your illegal activities. Knowing your new disciple was a writer, didn't you worry that he'd give the game away, expose your ring, and force you to shut down operations? Well, sure I was worried, but he promised me he'd keep quiet, and he wouldn't write anything neither, unless I okayed it first. And you trusted him? Yeah, he respected me, man. Trusted him, he was a white man. Did Jensen display... ...the point? Ooh. Oh, I haven't played on Xbox One in ages. We're all PC at the moment. I think I got rid of my Xbox One for this PC. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Did Jensen disobey Guzman at any point? I think, oh, I don't know, did he? I'm gonna go yes. Uh, da, da, da. Jensen planned. No, I didn't do that. Let's get back to those final moments, shall we? Maybe this time we can get. No, I don't straight. have it anymore. I you got drove rid of Neil it. Jensen home, like he asked me to. My Xbox One do picks up. What time was that? Oh, on my Four phone and the computer. More like two. That's Did you it. stay with him till he was safely inside? I do need to get mm. a new Xbox no. One. No. No. You dumped him there and took off. Why, Mr. Guzman? I heard a baby crying as I was coming up the walk with Neil, and I saw a light turn on, so I knew she was up. I, I was sure she was going to come down and get Neil. Yes? But I didn't want to have to be there and explain it all to her, you know? No, I expect you didn't. No further questions. Oh, we lost 30 on that one. Oh, no. Um, but we was still 30 up. I'm just going to make hard for a plea deal now. Um, nine times to put Ellie on the stand and let her talk about her husband Neil and the horrible events of my fifth. Oh, there's Steffi. She must be on her mobile. Um, I never said I wasn't going on Twitch. Um, come on. Right. No reason to ask tough questions, you just recount your experience and generate some sympathy. Try to avoid any mentions of Neil's shady life or spectrum of Want to death. take this one, Abby? Okay. The people call Ellie Jensen to the witness stand. Oh my god. What is she up to? <laughs> oh, you know when she's in the pub. Right, night of the murder. Mrs. Jensen, tell us how you discovered your husband on the night in question. Well, I heard a sort of a thunk coming from outside the front door. Did it wake you up? No. No, it wasn't loud enough for that, but luckily I was awake. Noah, my baby, had just waked me for his usual feeding. That at least conforms to Mr. Guzman's testimony. What condition was your husband in when you found him? He was... It was... Horrible. Oh, you can tell she's had a few to drink, aren't you? He was covered in blood, and he had this look <laughs> in his eyes like... He knew he was dying. I kept saying, who did this to you? Who did this to you? But all he could do was move his mouth. I think he was saying, I'm sorry. And there was nobody with him? Nobody. He was all alone. Now this is crucial. Mrs. Oh, Jensen, dear. what time did you discover your husband? Just before 4 a.m. You're absolutely sure? Yes. 
I glanced at the clock when my baby cried at five minutes, too. He always wakes up at the same time. Thank you, Mrs. Jensen. Oh, dear. So you finally come around, eh, Harlan? If that's the way you want to look at it, Jack. Great. What are you looking for? Really, Steph? No jail time. Oh Mr. Guzman God. pays a fine and does 12 months probation. Come on, he killed a man. Oh, Actually, dear. a rooster killed a man. He sat idly by for two hours and let an innocent man bleed to death. Probation? No way. We don't want probation. Uh, charge of manslaughter applies. Definitely manslaughter. Uh, mans man one. He served seven to fifteen years plus a twenty-five hundred dollar fine for cockfighting. How about it, Mr. Guzman? Why would we agree to that? We'll see you in court, Jack. You can see me in court. Ricardo Guzman will never win any good citizenship awards. He's a devotee of cockfighting, a sport which many, no doubt, many of you here in the jury consider barbaric and inhumane. But it's important to appreciate that oh, the defendant dear. is she the thinks product everybody's of another a girl. culture. I wouldn't worry about we mustn't ice let cream. cultural differences blind us to his essential humanity. Consider Mr. Guzman's uh, relationship. Hey, you better be a boy. Make sure to agree to act come and as check. Mr. Jensen's mentor. Not for money, but through mutual love of the sport. For many months, he patiently worked with him and trained with him. Uh, just a little, JJ. Mr. Just Jensen's a little. And She's in the pub friend. with and her friends. when the accident occurred, Mr. Guzman reacted as a friend would react, with care and concern. Perhaps he made the wrong decision <laughs> in taking the injured man home. Perhaps you or oh, I would have dear. gone straight to the hospital. But remember, Mr. Guzman is an immigrant, an outsider, with an outsider's suspicion of big institutions. My client has lost a friend, perhaps as the result oh, of his dear. own mistake. And for that, he will suffer for the rest of his life. But we we but love these comments, to to don't jail? we, JJ? We Good love it. It's always jury, funny to see I Steph. beg you, let's not compound one error with another. Yeah, probably better. <laughs> right, so it's our turn for a closing argument. Stay away from the jury and the facts and stay away from the topics. Of right, sway the jury with the facts and stay away from topics that might inflame cultural sensitivity. Right. Okay. Two hours. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Two hours. Two hours between the time Neil Jensen was stabbed stabbed repeatedly and the time the accused saw fit to do something about it two hours of agony of mr jensen bleeding losing strength crying for help for mercy but there was no mercy not from ricardo guzman um talk about the accused knew neil jensen well enough to understand the limits of their trust if the victim had survived the attack there would have been questions the story would have come out guzman's <laughs> illegal operation would have been see she exposed. does love me really he would have faced she loves prosecution me today or loss of livelihood at the very least he had a lot to lose and a lot oh, to gain dear. by doing nothing the legal community has a phrase for this behavior. Depraved indifference. None of us was in the slaughterhouse with Ricardo Guzman and Neil Jensen. None of us knows what, exactly what, what was going on through the I mind of the seen any women throw themselves at me. I wish I did, floor. though. We may never know exactly why he stood and waited. And waited. But we aren't being asked to judge Mr. Guzman's motivations. We're being asked to judge his acts, or in this case, his failure to act. And in this case, I think you'll agree. Inaction speaks louder than words. Oh, yeah. Has I, I, the jury come to a verdict? Come on, win. I want to win have, this. Your Honor. That'd be two, then. The charge of murder in the second degree, how do you find? We find the defendant, Ricardo Guzman, guilty. Yes! 
That's two. That is two that I've won. Yeah, baby. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Two. He got what he deserved. Not much comfort to you, I'm sure. It won't bring Neil back, but it gives me some closure. Will you be okay? I think he'll see to it. Right on schedule as always. Know anyone who needs a nanny? Mrs. Jensen let you go, huh? Ah, figures. I'm just one more thing that reminds her of Neil. And God knows she got rid of all his other stuff. His photo albums, his collections of rare books. Well, different people grieve in different ways. Yeah, I think she'll be doing her grieving in Aruba. She bought tickets yesterday. You don't suppose. You've got a suspicious mind, Curtis. Up for a little field trip tonight? Hmm. Okay. Five minutes to two. Right on schedule. You think that means... She couldn't bring herself to get rid of the rooster in the chicken coop, but the rooster in the house is a different story. Right, okay. So that I'm this is... I'm not sure is... I understand. She went up on the witness stand and told the court that she found her husband at 4 a.m. But she told us that her baby wakes up at the same times every day, and we heard the baby wake up at 2. So? Isn't it possible that the baby could have also woken her up at 4 a.m.? We're talking about a baby here. You don't have any proof that Ellie Jensen is lying. Which is why we need a warrant to search her brownstone. And just what are you hoping to find? Mrs. Jensen mentioned that she installed a nanny cam in her nursery. Those things have timestamps on them. She might be lying or not, but the nanny cam always tells the yeah, truth. Right, okay, this... Fine, I'll give you a warrant to confiscate the nanny cam, but only that. Okay. This is... Neil? Is that you? <coughs> 2 a.m., Mrs. Jensen. Care to tell us why you waited so long to call 911? I... I wasn't thinking straight. Clearly. I was just... so mad! He promised me he was going to stop running around like a damn teenager, wasting our money and risking so his stupid neck. So we've all for the just sake of sent a story. guy to he prison. He was going to calm down and be normal, a decent nothing? husband and father. Because she lied. He swore. I didn't want him to die. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. I think he learned. I think he learned as well. Jury just came back in the Jensen case. And? Guilty. Man 2, 10 to 20. Looks like PS84 is going to have to find themselves a new principal. Good work, gentlemen. How about we grab lunch? You still on that diet? No, nope. this, this is just health food. Got and, worse. Uh, <laughs> Julia. Right on schedule. And I feel great. Any preferences? Nope, I'm up for anything. Except chicken. For some reason, that doesn't appeal to me today. Chicken. Well, guys, that, that's episode two done. I have no how, no idea how many more episodes there are. Um, but that's... I think that's us for the night anyway. Um, yeah, looking at it. How many more episodes have we got? To do... Uh, five, six. Well, there's seven episodes in total. That's all right then. So that gives us quite a few episodes still to do on a future stream, I think. That's perfect. JJ, I'm gonna download the mod pack as soon as I can when I come off stream, because obviously my bandwidth's getting hit with streaming this. Um, da, 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 what else am I going to do? We'll go pick up the drunk one from the pub at some point, which will be funny. Uh, shame I can't record that on stream. But I could always record it on my phone. And then stream it 
at another time. <laughs> but I'm not that easy. <laughs> um, non stream when you get. Okay, dude, I shall uh, hit you up as soon as I've done all the mob packs and everything else. Get her from the pub, and then we should be good. Until next time, guys, you take care, and I shall be back again soon. Hopefully, again soon. It's been a little while since my last one. Maybe next. This week coming sometime. Um, until then, guys, take care. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you again soon. Bye bye.